You know what's what's neat, and I, I forgot to say this even early on. You know, sometimes you can invite speakers that you'll never deal with again. It's cool having someone like Greg, and then John Sheplock tomorrow, um, Kevin Harrington, that we'll be working with ongoing from this day forward. That'll have a real impact with what you guys do. So just really excited, very practical, and. Um, Really appreciate iHeart being able to do that for us. So, to take it up a notch, now, you know every year I love playing radio spots that are killing it around the country, right? Yeah. So, we've plucked out, out of the thousands that we did, spots that are really effective doing exactly what Greg described, but then also how to beat competition. Now, there's, there could be the iBuyer, there could be just a, another competitor who jumps on your station. There could be a number of things that, that are affecting you. Well, these are three people that are fantastic who are facing intense competition in their market, and they're winning, and they're doing great. And we've also plucked out some other spots that give really good examples. So you'll want to take notes because there might be one or two spots that exactly nail your market, and we can talk about it now and in the future. So the first thing I want, I, I, and uh, in, in terms of anything else you want to add, uh, Dave, I want to have Dave, and by the way, before I do anything else, can you guys please, he's, this man spent six hours moderating herding cats yesterday at the ISA day. Thank you. Thank you. I, and I'm not a talker. So. <laughs> Where, 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 Very shy. Where, where we knew he was a radio guy was at every break. Goes, and coming up after the break. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I mean, to add to it, I would just say uh, not everybody in the room is dealing with iBuyers right now, but of course it's a big topic. Even in Canada, we're you know trying to uh, foresee what uh, that might bring. But competition's competition, right? And at the end of the day, uh, the message may change a little bit, but those foundational elements that have been... Uh, successful for us over the years, really it's just making those better, focusing in on the things that we can have an effect on. Great storytellers, the right message, right platforms, right audience, right frequency, all those things. So uh, we have some real live examples here and then we'll talk to some of you in the audience who are, are implementing some of these ideas to compete in a tough market as well. So what I'm gonna start with are five specific things that work especially well that you can, many of you can implement in your own market, and then we'll talk, they're implementing several of them, and then we'll also open it up to the room as well to see what else you're doing uh, to, to beat other competition, whether it's iBuyer, Zillow, or whatever it is, because this, this, I've been looking forward to this topic for a long time. So right off the bat, the first thing, and it really goes with what Greg Ashlock mentioned, is making friends with your, with your talent, helping them feel your pain. So recently, right here in Riverside, we had um, Gary Zendayas. Gary, and, and Gary, you've been among other people. I think Kathy, Jeff, Gary has been with me for 15 years. So the first time in 15 years, uh, uh, the iBuyer offer pad came in his market and RAE called me scared because of the frequency they were gonna run. So we sat down, he's been working with Scott in the mornings for 20 years. He's been on the air 20 years, been on the air for, for 15 years. So after our conversation, this is the type of spot we created. I have recommended Gary Zendejas of Realty World Premier for a long time. He's the only agent I would call if I needed to sell my home. Ken and Diane did not take my advice. They met with one of those instant offer companies that seem to be popping up everywhere. Turns out this company wanted to keep all of their hard-earned equity for themselves. They made them an offer way below market value. They wanted to charge them $20,000, and they wanted to discount that offer even further because of the condition of the house. So rather than be ripped off by this company, Ken and Diane brought in Gary's and Dejas to sell their home, who made them the same guarantee he'll make you. He'll sell it at a price and a deadline you agree to, or he'll buy it. But he didn't have to because the home sold in four days for $60,000 more than was offered by this other company. Gary doesn't want your equity. He wants your home to sell for top dollar, so you get thousands more at closing time. So make Gary your first call at 909-841-7501 and find him online at fasthomeseller.com. That's fasthomeseller.com. What do you guys think? 
Great. Great. Was that authentic? Yeah. Is that real? Yeah. And that is what that was the result of us sitting down with Scott, talking to him, telling him, these guys are coming in. They're they're not attacking Gary. They're attacking your credibility. That's the power of an influencer. Now, as an influencer, he takes that personal, and he's going to protect his listeners. Big shift. That's the that's why we really would like working with influencers. The other thing was, you notice, Gary, I'll, I gotta give him props. For 15 years, he's been sending me meaningful success stories every month for 15 years. And you wonder why he's still here? That's why. So that's number one. If but I could also, just break that, just to add one thing, Matt, yeah. just to break it down, right? What, what made that spot, just shout it out, what made that spot so effective? It was a story. Both, right? It was authentic, but the story, Kathy's, on point. So what do you need to do if we're gonna if you have an eye buyer and you want to deliver the same kind of spot? You gotta isolate that story and do you have them? Yes. Right? Where the eye buyers have proven selfish and what you want to do is make sure the homeowner gets the money. You don't want them you gotta we have to get those success stories. So it's to it's to isolate those, to work with your team to be listening for those stories, to expose them. If you have the stories and you have the storyteller, we can create a spot like that for you. Without it, without the story, we can't create a spot that effective. Excellent. So that's number one. But now we also, um, Sean Hannity, we've also gotten him to cut a customized spot for this particular market. We just got this two weeks ago. We can create it, also customize it for anyone who's using Sean. You want to play that? Hey, do you want to sell your home without having to pay huge hidden fees or giving up tens of thousands of dollars in equity? For all my friends in Houston, it's your friend Sean Hannity. Now, I research and work with top real estate agents in North America, and I know that Lance Loken of the Loken Group at Keller Williams has sold, get this, over 2,000 homes. You heard me right, over 2,000 homes sold, and Lance can give you an immediate cash offer without huge hidden fees. Now, how does he do it? It's simple. He has over 64,000 buyers looking at his homes every month. He's now listing so many homes every day that he has insider access to great homes and deals about to hit the market. Now, I love agents that have that kind of insider knowledge. Now, when it comes to the biggest asset in your life, don't rely on algorithms to sell your home. Don't take a chance. Call Lance. That's Lance Loken at 281-861-4624. Or get immediate answers online at thelokengroup.com. Back to music. So, what do you like about that? What do you guys think? I think it cut Lance short. Yeah. Because Lance sold yeah. 2,000 homes last year alone. Lance, right? That's true. So, that was 2,000 homes last year alone. Yeah, that's missing from the spot. Okay. Right. Vince? I like, I like the friend, like, call my friend. It was, was warm. It sounded like, hey, he's going to put his arm around Lance. I like that. No, it's true. But the thing to, because we... <laughs> but we want to be authentic. We're specific. He attacks the eye buyer, and he, he, he do, you, do you think do you get the vibe from that spot that Sean knows Lance? Yeah. Because he knows specifics. When you give us specific stats like that that we can use, sixty-four thousand buyers that he's got ready, that makes it authentic and that makes it real. So. That's the first thing, getting to know, working closely. The second thing is we also, once or twice a month, we'd like to do interview styles to update people about the market. Now, these aren't lead generation per se spots, but they complement the call to actions. I'll give an example of, of what we did with the iBuyer in San Antonio. This is Randy Carroll from my friend Spencer Hash and Reagan Williamson of Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate Home City. Reagan is here with me now. I see people getting or taking these instant offers on their homes from these big corporations, and then they end up regretting it. What's up with that? Well, I think that uh, what we see in the market is that they fall for all that slick marketing and the ease of just selling their house. But in reality, all that that particular person is doing is exposing their house to one buyer. 
We live in a city of over 2 million people, heavy military city, people moving in and out of here. How do you know you got the best price for your house if you only had one buyer come along and take a look at it? These companies are heavily funded by Wall Street. That's where they get the money to buy your house. And you wind up leaving all of that equity on the table, which winds up as a profit for them, goes to Wall Street, and then is distributed outside of your community and outside of our own country. Reagan and Spencer want to put the money in your pocket, not Wall Street's pocket. Call them at 826-5300. That's 826 826- 5300. They're online at 826-5300.com and start packing. That was brilliant. Which, Mark? For us, yeah. the iBuyer has been a game changer. Are we diluting it a little? No, again, not. Impacting competitors and others that are going to start being critical of, of our process? No, because there's two messages. Now, there's one. That's, a, that's an excellent point. So on the one hand, now remember, they're not in St. Louis, and we're not attacking, you're not being attacked by them. Well, but they're coming, by the way, Open Door just announced, but I'm just saying in general, our competitors. When you have a story, because sometimes that's, what, that's in his case, he's being attacked. But if you show the value of an immediate offer, some people don't care, they want that. But when you compliment, when you compliment that, with another spot that shows how you did create demand, how people wanted to put it on the open market. It just, every market is different and unique. In his market, he's gonna attack by them, that was appropriate. In your market, we wouldn't use it, we wouldn't have to. But you've got enough credibility built up already that we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to tailor it like that because you're not being attacked by it. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, would, I would add to that that in Reagan's situation, and I won't put I won't speak for Reagan. If we can bring Reagan a mic, uh, can I just have a little quick, quick conversation with Reagan on that? Right over here. Um, it's, it's, it's a real and present danger, right? Not to live off fear, but maybe just speak to the, the number of times you're competing against these guys on, on listing appointments. Uh, we're competing against them 30 to 40% of the time. Right. And have you lost deals to them? Uh, 30% of market share was lost last year. Yeah. Yeah. This is about consumer education, getting out in front of it, right? Was that was that really at the at the heart of it? So yeah. Are you not doing iBuyer type of program? We are going to do iBuyer program, yes, but we were not before. We were we were doing guaranteed sale, but now we're going to do the instant offer as well. Yeah. And so you're doing what you're. <laughs> but if you'll notice, one of the other spots also said we're doing iBuyer without all those hidden fees. Well, with the instant offer, we use our own money. So what we're critical of is SoftBank's position, $700 million position, and heavily funded by you know Japanese and, 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 and Saudi Arabians, and that money is going completely out of the country. So our message to our consumers is it's our money that's staying in our community. To make also, that also I'd add to that and say that what we're leading with our success story is that we get you more money, but hey... You know, if you're in a position where you would 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 rather have an instant offer, we can do that too. But Absolutely, it's, it's 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 trying to do everything, and at the, at the I think the best possible thing would be we'll beat their offer. If you and I mean if you're in, up against it that hard, correct. We we just want to show them multiple options on what their equity position is at the final sale and let them choose the, not the final net number that works best for their current situation. That's it. And how have the Randy Carroll ads, the one we just heard, how have they helped pr- provide a solution? Because we had a real problem. Are they, are they providing a solution? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then the relationship with Randy Carroll is, is authentic. He whips me at golf all the time. Good. So it's been fantastic for, for Randy. And we're also running with Charlie Parker on OAI. Real quick, I think you're going to have to bend this out of that. This is a home seller. Al- I think you're going to have to bend out of that ad, though, as you guys do to your instant offer. And I think what's the key for our instant offer program is that it's an option. And we just we want to provide them the option so they can identify both approaches. We don't have those in our market yet. I know they are coming, but I have the ability to say to them, let's discuss that convenience approach, but let's also discuss the net dollar approach. That's correct. We're just trying to just trying to head it off at the pass right now, but we do have a multiple tiered approach. Uh, Stephen Cooley's going through the same situation and uh, has done the interactive ads as well. Stephen, what are your thoughts? 
for most of us who do big advertising, everybody in the room, we're probably in the medium price point of our town because that's where you can really buy business. And when Open Door and Offer Pad comes to your town and they're really hitting my um, Charlotte, North Carolina very hard, um, that is where they buy. And so you will hear, you will feel a 20 or 30 percent hit on your listing side when they come to town. The other challenge is, and the reason you kind of have to do those attack ads back, you know, um, Open Door came to town. I met with them multiple times, took the rep, the East Coast rep to dinner and all. They will buy the home if they only make $300 when they sell it. And you're, um, because they booted us out of number one spot in our MLS um, um, this year. And when you go in and look at what they paid and what they sold the home for, um, sometimes it's two or three or four or five hundred dollars in the end. And that's what um, Sam, who represents the East Coast, told me. If they can make five hundred dollars, they'll do the deal. We're, I'm not able to I buy their home and make two or three hundred dollars. Right. And so, um, the other thing I'm seeing is the people in my marketplace who are backing their own I buy with the money. Um, uh, you're get, they're getting a little bit of a bad reputation because the sellers are going back and looking and saying, oh, you made $30,000 and you just painted the home. Why didn't you tell me to do that? And so you're just, I just see some kickback happening on the East Coast from you being your own eye buyer. So I just say be real careful with that. Um, and the, the real message is, is do you want one buyer looking at your home or would you like thousands of buyers looking at your home? And um, we're, we're doing the hand raises, but we're going in and just really pushing, keep your equity um, and you've earned it, you've owned the home, why would you give it up to someone else and really pu pushing the traditional plan? Um, but when they do hit your market, they you will feel it. You'll you'll know the difference immediately, um, and they'll become your number one competitor. However, like Greg Ashlock said, convenience wins, yeah. and it's an option. And as long as you are providing them that option of we can list it at X, that's what I'm going to do when I purchase your home, or we can take the instant offer, and you have convenience and certainty that you choose the closing date and this is what your property is going to sell for. As long as they're making the decision, I think that, and they have the option, I think that that alleviates some of that back end pressure when people are saying, I didn't realize that I could have sold my house for X. You know, as long as they are aware of that, I think that that overcomes that. Mark, you also, did that answer your question or do you have a, I know you. I was going to say, we're actually giving them the three values. Yeah. That's it. We're being very transparent here. If you want an I buyer, here it is. If you want guaranteed sale, this is what it looks like. You want, uh, you know, equity, and you're leaving this on the table. Um, so we're actually letting them know that. Um, no, that's excellent. The value that's that's the best way to do it. Yeah, All three options. Our position is the wholesalers are going in just singularly focused. The traditional are going in singularly focused. Focus. We have all these options. Give them options, and our conversions run up exponentially because of that. So I don't think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's an important space. Well, no, it's it's very it's very timely. But that's where stories are absolutely critical. Because here's the thing, right? If, and we'll get more of these as we go. But when you hear a story, imagine the seller came to the table willing to give up equity. You wind up not only saving them from a cash buyer. But now you make them extra money. What does that make you look like? You look like a hero. That you're not in a cash grab. These guys are in cash grabs. I think what's really important is stories like that distinguish someone like Ryan or Mark when they do come in, because all they're saying is, "We'll take your home. We'll take your home. We'll take your home." Ryan's like, "No, no, no, no. We'll help you make the best decision for you. If you want to sell it now, you can. Look, if you want to net the most money, we'll help you do that." They're not doing that. And you've got the influencer saying, I trust this person. You can't trust this out-of-state company that you have no idea what they're doing. Chip? One of the things I, Can you hold on just for a second? We got a mic coming. 
One of the things that I did kind of along the lines of what y'all were talking about is I had one that I made a little more on it than I thought, and I told them what I was going to sell it for, and I told the seller, if you want the convenience fee and you want to do a rocket listing, I'll send you anything over and above that I make on this when you're down in Florida. And I did. I made more than I thought, and I mailed them a check for the rest. Uh, and they were they were just totally in awe at that. But it was several months later, but uh, it got me the business. I made plenty on it, and then they got over and above uh, what what I needed to make on it. So, uh, and I felt like it was transparent, and they were shocked. They they didn't think they'd ever hear from me again. What I'm going to do is have an attorney write something up that says, "Here's what I'm going to sell it for. Here's what I'll give you for it. If I make more than the, than than this amount, I will send you the over and above difference." And uh, I did that, and I, I think the people appreciated it. What I don't love about that though is. Once they tell someone else that you did that, and then all of a sudden transparency starts getting questioned because there was a contribution to closing cost, or you had to put X amount of dollars into it, and the X amount of dollars, did you pay retail or did you pay wholesale, or do you have a contractor on your staff, it gets muddied the bigger it gets. It's, it's, a, it's a great one-time thing, but as soon as they tell other people that, people are going to start expecting it. It's good. So you saw the, you also, we could do digital ads too, like you saw earlier. Did you like Ryan's uh, digital ad? Is that pretty cool? And of course, we saw the results with Rob, but Marty actually has, has created one that you, that she actually put a cartoon behind it. We'll go, we'll go to you a little bit more later, but can, I think, is it, can we, uh, I think that that's, that's coming up, but the, that, we'll, t we'll touch, touch you in a second. But the other one, was we no, we will. Trust me. I got. I got. I got. <laughs> we can't wait. We we gotta keep you in suspense. We gotta keep you in suspense. But next thing, next thing I w would make a note of is make sure the offers on your website. That sounds simple, but we'll see. These guys are good examples of this. But number five, and this is one. If you've got a local morning show or afternoon show, local host, how many of you have ever had a caller? call in and brag about you, okay? One or two? This is what happened with Tiffany Holtz. And remember this, if you've got a strong, don't do this every month, maybe even every two months, stage it right, but look at the reaction of this example. <coughs> Shotgun. I had one of the best weekends. I got my house sold that I've been trying to sell for two and a half years. And you know who sold it? <gasps> Lay it on us. Tiffany Holt. Yay! <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. We were so, lying when we said she's the best. So two and a half years, I used some local realtors, nothing against some local realtors, but the house went on the market Friday morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. I had people standing at the end of the driveway at 7.30, and I had an offer $6,000 above my asking price by 2.30 Friday afternoon. It was awesome. Okay, that is our ad today. Yeah. You yeah, just did is. our commercial. Thank you very much. <laughs> awesome, my man. Well, congratulations. Isn't that a great feeling? It is. It's, it's just leverage. It is amazing. Now, now, Tiffany, how did you leverage that? What did you do with that? Did you just let it let it run and, and ignore it? We actually took the the video or the audio clip and we put it to video with uh, some pictures of our radio talent and ran it as social media ads. And where else? Is, where else is it right now? Where anyone can access it? Right. So if you go to my website and you go to the front page, you'll see a picture of Shotgun and Charlie. And when you click on them, there's the audio of that as well. Um, when once you're on their page. Yeah. Tiffany, Google search Tiffany. You can find her site. Goes right to the right page. See. <laughs> But, but you see, the beauty of that is putting those tap badge, and now every time someone goes to her site, sees Charlie and Shotgun, is this real? They click on it, they're hearing that. She's helping them do their homework. So if you guys have a great example, and you can, you can stage it, have them call your favorite morning show host and let them just riff, because what was great about that spot? It's authentic. natural. Authentic. You believe it. That's key. So those are the five things. And anyway, if you have a local town, we can help you coordinate that. Well, now let's, let's, let's get a chance to talk to some of our panelists who have been patiently waiting on here. Uh, we'll start first um, with, with, with Tracy. Now, Tracy, or no, I actually have Marty going first. And then you're actually in a very intense market. But 
I should have listened to you many years ago. <laughs> and really embrace Coming Soon even more than I have. We've used it on radio, mm -hmm. but I never associated it with the connection that we get. Can we play the spot and then we can talk about this? But now watch the video. She not only took a radio spot, but she actually choreographed it to a video that she plays on social media online. Here we go. Listen to the show, you know, one of our big concerns is that eventually AI goes postal and eliminates humanity, but actually it can already get you in the form of the algorithm. You know what this is? This is when you go to sell your home with one of those instant offer companies and you leave it up to an algorithm. Who, in the case of uh, one local seller, uh, offered 272000 for the home with a bunch of fees attached. But luckily, that seller called my friend Marty Hampton of Remax. See, Marty figured out with some repairs, some staging, and her Coming Soon Homes program. She get that all the way up to two hundred ninety thousand. Yeah, and by the way, in the first weekend for full asking price, they were able to sell the home and uh, put an additional twenty five thousand in the seller's pocket. So go with the only agent making the home sale guarantee, guaranteeing to sell your home at a price and a deadline you all have agreed to in advance. And if not, she buys it. And the only agent I Casio Day would ever go with. That's Marty Hampton. Call 601-7710, 601-7710, or martyhampton.com. That's martyhampton.com. What do you guys think? <laughs> now, what I love about that is you really took it up a notch. Did you guys notice the act, besides coming soon, which is great, we'll talk about that in a minute, but did you notice another subtle detail she added in besides avoiding the hidden fees? What did, what did you notice that she was willing to do for that seller? that an instant offer company might try to claim to do? Staged it. Staged it. What else is important? Coming soon. Repair. Who said that? Becky, what'd she say? Say it louder. Repair. Repairs. Why was that so significant, Marty? Well, I'm seeing a lot of buyers in my market that are going to uh, Open Door because they're just overcome with what they need to do to their house. And, and oftentimes, they don't need to do as much as they think they need to do, but that's the reason they push that button. And one thing I wanted to say to Stephen is, in my market, Open Door bought 1,000 homes last year. And I want to tell you something. They didn't make three to 500 on every single home. Actually, they lost money. And that's the reason... Bless heaven above, I was able to stay as the number one seller of resale homes in my market for the fourth year straight in a row, above Open Door, who bought a thousand homes and tried to resell a thousand, but they didn't get the job done. So I think we, we're doing another option, and that option is to, when we go into a house, we'll not only give them a price to stage it and, and do the necessary repairs, but we'll front that money in some cases uh, and, and let them put that equity in their pocket because I want to put the equity, I don't want them to leave it on the table for that party that's coming in from out of our market that's got overseas money because that's really what it is. Uh, so we want to put the money in their pocket. And I'm, I'm, they're scalpers as far as I'm concerned. They're scalping. They've, they've studied these markets. They're going to where people have equity. People don't understand really the value of their home. So that's the reason we do it. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now I would just, I would just add to that that, that, that just to reiterate, if we're looking at the best possible option to compete with I'll give you a cash offer for your home it's we'll get you more money for your home and we'll take care of the repairs like you said that to to make it easy and get them more money for their home right if you have the financial ability to do that that's that's the quintessential deal for any home seller absolutely repairs and staging because in some cases they need carpet this that and the other and they get the money for that now we charge them for that <laughs> but hey, it, it solves the problem. Yeah, and it gets and it gets you in front of them. Mm -hmm. It's again, it's just customizing it to your market to, to to what to what you're dealing with. Yes. So describe now that that little video we use also for for coming soon. How does that help you? How do you leverage that? With you heard me talk about that today this morning. How do you now leverage that to as an advantage to uh, helping a seller? 
and you know, I've used it for so long and it's worked in all type of markets for me. This is the way that I do business. When I see my, and my competitors are from other companies and I don't want to sound like them. I don't want to do business like them. It's the way we do business. And we've done business that way for a long time. So we're known as the place to go to know what's going to happen in the market next. And if you're a seller in my market, if you're in certain price ranges, you're scared to death to sell your home because it's going to sell before you found something else. So really the logical thing to do is to get your house all set up on coming soon home, including all the professional staging, all the professional photos, everything, so that when you do find something, you can back it up with a guaranteed sale, but you're instantly uh, uh, able to put that house active on the market at that time, and nine times out of ten, you're going to get it closed and sold before they have to take advantage of an uh, instant offer. Now, an extra widget that you provided on your website, which is pretty slick. If you guys look at MartyHampton.com, go on your phones right now and just Google search Marty. Crasher. Good, crash that site. Look at what's at the bottom. We actually improved our coming soon process. So we've got a whole technique that we do. Uh, whenever we list a home, you know, I could go through it quickly. That The parts that I remember, you know, one of the things is a listing agent, when they walk out the door with that new listing sign, let's say that the house is going to go on the market in two weeks, they put the, uh, a temporary sign in the ground because we've got a sign company, and they have door hangers with them, and they'll knock on 20 doors. And if the person's not there, they'll say, you know, Mr. and Ms. Smith just hired us to sell their home and we wondered if you knew anybody that wanted to live in your great neighborhood. And of course, if they're not there, we leave a door hanger that said, Mr. and Ms. Smith hired us to sell your home and we'd love to know if you know anybody that wants to live in your neighborhood, here's my number, call. We don't leave the price of the home. So they call <laughs> and they ask. We have our agent put an immediate um, a live Facebook live post that uh, we're getting a hot new listing in this great new neighborhood in this fabulous price range and the details are going to be on comingsoonhomes.com within 20, 24, 48 hours. So we've got that whole vibe going and we do the social media rollout on the very beginning details and then we build that process to the final push right before we have our first open house. So it's, it's been a wonderful process for us and, and I think it's given the seller um, more results. We, we've got our market, I know the statistics in multiple offers, and we doubled the statistics of, of multiple offers. We doubled the statistics of cash offers because in my market, probably like Stevens, there's a lot of investors coming in buying that 250, 350 home, and we get them the most money. Excellent. Well, very good. Well, next, uh, Tracy, let's talk to you for a few minutes because you also have very intense competition uh, in your market. And talk a little bit about what you've done to counteract it. You actually have a, you very, you, you have a unique offer, too, that, that, that you utilize. Um, why don't we play her spot, then we'll talk about it a little bit. And you'll also feel free to Google search her as well and see how her ad corresponds with her website. And by the way, Taylor, who you'll hear, this is okay. she's on many, several fish stations around the country. If she's available in your market, we love her. She's fantastic, and she does great spots for us. She totally gets it. Go ahead. This is a home seller alert. Don't give away your hard-earned money. Hey, it's Taylor with the Kevin and Taylor Show with a huge tip for you. You've heard of those instant offers on homes. Well, those are losing sellers money, netting them as low as 30% less than market value. Before you potentially give away everything you've worked for, call Atlanta's most trusted real estate expert advisor, Tracy Cousineau, and get paid what your home is truly worth. Tracy Cousineau is the only agent I recommend in Atlanta because she consistently gets home sellers up to 18 percent more money than traditional real estate agents. If you're in a distress situation or your home is in poor condition, Tracy can absolutely remove the stress by making you an instant cash offer, but that very likely is not the best program for you. Tracy Cousineau is my agent and her proven accelerated demand system is the best option in today's market. To get an absolutely free valuation of what Tracy's strategic marketing system will get you while selling your home, call 855-MY-EXPERT or go to tracycousineau.com. That's cousin with an E-A-U because you know she's going to sell your home. What do you guys think? What do you like about it? What, what struck you there? Do you think she's friends with Taylor? 
Do you get that vibe? One of the things that you excel at when I first met you, how, how active do you get with your, with your radio talents? Very, because we have to, we're building rapport through voice. So they're not seeing us all the time face to face. So if I'm warm with and have a friendly relationship with who I'm speaking to on radio, the tonality, the consumer can envision and create and listen to that story as they see us hanging out. And so that really, I've, we've met other talent and we can tell as soon as we leave, this isn't gonna work. You have to be able to connect with them because the audience hears, the listeners hear. They can tell by your tonality. Yeah, no, it's very true. We spend a lot of time with them. We do outings with them. We go to events with them. Um, we see them a lot. One of the single most important things, and I, I know if any of you have been involved with my talent recommendations or calls, is when you meet with your talent, and we can't do this because we can't read their body language or see what they say, the very last thing when you're done with them, ask them, say, you know, I, I appreciate you meeting with us, a lot, a lot, a lot. Well, anyway, if I needed to sell my home, is there any reason why you wouldn't call me? Watch their body language. Watch where they look. If they instantly go, oh, no, absolutely, you're great. You know you got them. If they, um, red flag, find out why not. I can tell you I've had campaigns where people have taken our money, they've been agreeable, and then we find out midstream that they sold their home with another agent. You want to see Wagner get mad? I get mad. Because that's, that's silly. But it goes back to that question. Just asking them very authentically, is there any reason why we wouldn't work together? And watch them. And then say, you know what? If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're not, let me, let me back up. Why not? Clear that up. But then if they do, you know what? That will affect our recommendation. Why would we have somebody recommending you that on the street won't recommend you? It doesn't make sense. We will back out of that in a heartbeat. So to that, to that point, you do that really well. Uh, you had a question, Chip? Um, for, first of all, I buyer, I buyers aren't in our market yet. I think maybe they're starting at the high markets and they're, coming, they're going to make their way down to the smaller markets. I don't know if that's their game plan, but... It is. It is? Okay, good. Thanks. Our, in, in a political campaign, you never want to talk about the other, the other name. You never want to use the other name. So by using iBuyers so much, are we promoting the iBuyers out there? That's the first question. And second of all, not all the people that go to talk to the iBuyers are liking what they're hearing, so they're, they, they'll say no. Are we positioning, how are you guys positioning yourself so you're the second call or the second click? Because the first one is to go to the iBuyer. How are the ads positioning themselves? Once you've done that and you don't like them, make sure you call us instead. Well, if you noticed, what else do you notice about that? She's not only saying don't give away your equity. What's on her website? Have you looked up, if you, if you Google search it, what's big, broad, and, and, and wide? What is she going to help you get for your home? Did you catch that? 18% up to 18% more money. Can you explain that, Tracy, how you can make such a big gap and big, bold offer? So on the uh, ad that just ran for the instant offer programs, we've been able to get up to 30%. So you have that airing, and then traditionally 18% um, more. So we break it down to um, all the value that we add in the marketing that we do. We start with staging. Um, we position, we don't do the typical CMA. So when we go in there knowing in the value and the knowledge that we have in pricing their home, we're not overpricing the home, but the other things that we add to it bring more value. So most of the time their offers are gonna be at list price or above at price because of how we position them. So we have a list of things that we do that maximizes their return. Um, when we left here last year, knowing that all of these offer companies were coming left and right, um, we had not, we had actually lost business 
because we were living in that fear of we didn't understand the opportunity. Actually, we haven't lost any since we came since we, in the last year because we found a way to actually get to the consumer, bring them more value, and not look at it as fear but as the opportunity. So when we went back, we started um, going to all of these different companies, and if you have the listing, then they are not going to be able to go to that seller and give the seller directly that offer. But we didn't have anything to go by yet to start case studies. So we went in for our listings, and we went to these companies and we asked for an instant offer on their homes. So then we could start creating those case studies and show, okay, they're, one will go from 6.5% up to like 13%. And there's no, it's just an algorithm on, that determines where that price is going to be for that particular property before somebody goes out to their property. And then you'll see on some of them, because they, they come in all across the board, so some of them will have on an, a traditional um, listing, you're going to pay $8,000 for repairs, but for the instant offer company, they've got zero. So they're already predetermining and trying to tell the seller that, oh, you're going to have these repairs when they've never stepped foot in this person's home. And so the more that you have, the credibility of you going, I've just walked your property, and I don't see that you're spending $8,000 on repairs, they're going to start realizing, okay, this is a bunch of crap. You know, we you know, we just started really giving these case studies out and then when that home sold, really showing and telling the full story and it's a story and you tell the story whether it's on social media or blogging or whatever or on air, you can tell those stories, but we have the consumer call and tell the story. Um, but the big pain point of the instant offers is if they do go to that next step and they say, we want you to come and look at our home so that we know the repairs, um, it's that conversation you have, especially in our market, it, the seller's disclosure states, have you had any inspections on your property? Well, guess what? Now they have to say yes, and they have to disclose everything that just came up in that report from that iBuyer company or you know whoever it is, because now they're aware and a lot of the times, they're not the stuff that comes back on those reports aren't even right. But now, let's say they say, "Hey, you have a structural problem. We want twenty thousand dollars in repairs to go towards this offer." If it's not true, they now have to go spend the money and get a structural engineer to provide the case. So we just give them all the pain points and say, "You know, you're opening yourself up to a lot more at the end of the day because." They're making these repairs up for the most part. I mean, they're looking at the big ticketed items. So it doesn't make sense. And you, as long as you educate. Can I, so I think the big epiphany with the whole instant offer is all you, everyone just keeps focusing on dollars. And as soon as you stop focusing, on, to some people, it's not about net dollars. Uh, we were at a rate conference like two years ago, and we were out, a bunch of guys on it. And uh, we were out with Travis Howard, and there was a long line to get into the club, and he said, I got more money than patience. Let's go. And he went to the front of the line and gave the bouncer, you know, like a couple hundred bucks and we all went in the club. And it's like, if you stop looking at it as they only are netting $300, if you start looking at it as a solution for your clients that doesn't involve the dollar side of it, all of a sudden it's going to completely open this up and change the game for you, in my opinion. No, and don't get me wrong, we're not a we don't say we're not going to not do instant offer, but it's quantifying it and giving options. That's what we're talking about. The whole idea is you're netting them more money locally. That's what we're talking about. Well, and that's why they buy that. real estate. Yeah. For the most part, they're buying if real we estate. Buying both. Right. We've got it. I just I, I look at it like this. Some people flew here and sat in first class, and some people flew coach. We all got here. You know, it's like you. There are just options. When you buy something online on Amazon before Amazon Prime or if you don't have it, you can get ground in seven days for free or you could spend seven ninety nine for overnight. It's, 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 it's not just about the dollar side of it. It's about providing a solution. And I think that if you offer the option, it puts you in a really good position to focus on what is most important to you, net dollars or convenience. And so I think that that needs to be the focus of, of providing that option. Well, I think you and, and Mark have an excellent website that is, as a consumer, if I go there, 
I'm looking at that site going, oh, I've got two options. If I want to do this, if I want to net more money, here's here. If I just want to get rid of it, I can do both. They do both. I think that's, that, that's the point of it. We just have to ramp up the intensity for certain people because certain people are, are, more, are more of a tack than others. But the whole idea is customizing each spot for every market and what the needs are. What I write for you, Mark, is going to be different than what I write for her or what I write for someone else. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Somebody that's competing with Open Door, do you? Uh, it sounds like they're working off very short margins. Doesn't that mean they're paying rich prices that that traditionally they're going to net less with commissions? I mean, it sounds like they're something that Open Door is actually overpaying and, and netting the people more than us after commissions. That are not really no, you're right. They're making they're making Why great. I mean, it sucks for us. <laughs> so they're still. Well, what I've what I've seen is that there. So I'll give you an example. In Vegas, there was a woman who had her home. She wanted to put her home on the market. The, you know, the 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 consideration was, or or the the fact was, in terms of what the home was worth, three eighty five to three ninety five, three eighty five to three ninety five, with a few repairs, three ninety five, right. The offer was 383. So, when I mean, you think about it from that perspective, somebody's got some equity. In that case, she was like, "I'm going to take the 383." Immediately, the, the her son was saying, "Put put a, put a couple of grand into it, and we'll get another 15,000 for the home." She was like, "You know what? For 15,000, like for 383 cash today, I'll take it." But aren't you going to have 20000 in commission? Am I missing? I mean, no, but they charge commission. Open door charges commission. Yeah, Rick, Rick, do you mind not commenting Open on door that? charges commission. They charge a transaction fee. Yeah, Mike. I don't know that particular instance, but I know there's not a, a there's not any standard commission, and their commission can be in my market anywhere from uh, six to even I've even seen higher than that. I've seen transaction fees of eighteen thousand, and they do repairs. They so so yeah, for Rick's, repairs. Rick's in Vegas. I want to also just mention to Chip too, because the question is where are they going? I can look at media monitors and pull like a full nationwide report where they're buying media. And it's very interesting. If you could sort of just use a, a graph, a color, it's all across the south in all the desert markets. And the reason for that is because there's no mold, there's no mildew, no basements. No basements. We got it. And they're starting in markets where it's easy and cheap to just slap paint on because every house is the That's same color. Do. That's what they do. They can do a quick slap of paint I found and they can turn it around quickly. So they're testing markets where it's the most inexpensive repair. Now they're they're testing in other little markets in the north too, but that's just testing. It's like Ashlock said, they aren't fully committed. It's 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 an experiment. The whole thing is an experiment in disruption. But um, Rick is in Vegas, and I think yeah, Rick is really dealing. I, I've, got a, I've got a mic here. So they uh, they also have uh, fees on there. So uh, on one particular seller we had, it was uh, four hundred and fifty thousand. They had over fifty thousand dollars in in uh, costs, and I brought I bring a copy of it with me, and they just invent fees. Like one of them's called the Open Door Experience. And I go <laughs> the, the Open Door Experience, and then this one's the the market. Market risk fee. Well, of course there's a market risk, and I just make it sound so silly. So if I can get, you know, in front of them, sit across the table, you know, I never lose a listing. But people are, you know, paying for that convenience. The other thing that they do is understand they're not just a competitor. Their goal is to try to put you out of business. They're trying to sling as much mud as they can, and they're not bound by the same rules, or actually they are, but they kind of cheat a little bit. If, if you have a seller that's kind of investigating goes to their site, they will have non-licensed people follow up and negotiate contracts with that person even after they sign a contract with you, uh, you know, breaking state law, something that none of us could do, but, but they're doing it. Um, and then they will get inspection reports, and they will charge a seller, so whatever they initially go 
in and the seller goes, ah, I was going to list it with Rick at a higher price, but they offered this, oh, well, I'll just take it. Then they renegotiate again once the inspection report comes in, and they may or may not ever make those same repairs, and then when they sell the house, they're not disclosing they're they're just uh, they're a wolf in, in sheep's clothing in my opinion. Yeah, I remember as we started right in the beginning, it was like there's no secret potion. It's just do what you're doing, do it better, and 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 lean into the the attributes and benefits that you bring that they don't. It's really just better success stories, and they're success stories that show how you were able to save someone, like Matt said earlier, be the savior. That and and, and like a Gary Zendeja spot when you can show that you got more money when somebody was about to just give all that equity away to an eye buyer. And to Chip's point earlier, don't do it. Don't talk about it if it isn't a real threat. Like for Steven and for Reagan, this is, we're talking 20, 30, Marty, it's a real threat. So we have to provide consumer education and those, those interactive spots help to do that. But Jordan has had her hand up too, right? And Jordan's in a Southern market, so you're dealing with it too, if we could just get the yeah, mic over to Jordan Davis. Hold on one second. We're in Dallas, which is a test market for Open Door. We were the first one they rolled out. In fact, I don't know if you remember this, Matt, but I stood up a year ago and said, Open Door is coming to your market. They are coming. It's like Game of Thrones, winter is coming. <laughs> um, but what's interesting is you asked, why would a seller sell with them? Um, it, it, it sounds like it's in their best interest. And you're completely right, assuming that the market is neutral. In Dallas, they've really eliminated what they will take. So no basements. Dave mentioned that. Um, there can be no foundation work. Um, no flood damage ever in the history of the home. And um, in Dallas, that really like eliminates a lot. But as a buyer, wouldn't you also want that home? And they won't go above 300000 Well, in our market, we're still seeing multiple offers in that price point that they're targeting. And so when we're talking to sellers, they're, they're eliminating the opportunity for multiple offers, which we're still seeing. So for us, it's, it's stories about that market. Um, so yes, on paper, are they paying fair market value? And are their fees similar to what you're going to pay to sell your home traditionally? Absolutely. However, you take away the opportunity for multiple offers to net them the most money. We've kind of reverse engineered the guaranteed offer, which is we'll make you an offer, we'll go ahead and put it on paper that's similar to what they'll do, and we'll list it, and if you can sell and net the most money, we'll back out of our contract and let you honor that one. So now they have both, and they can win if they're offering in a contingent situation. Whoa. That's good. Okay, we'll do Matt and Daryl. If you could bring the mic around to Lisa. So Jordan, I, I think what you're doing is right on the money. We're we're here defending our position to each other. Yeah. I don't know if you all are noticing that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm putting myself in the shoes of a home seller. Selling a home sucks. I got. 30 people come through my house. I got to keep it clean. I got to stage it. I got to keep the toys picked up. They kick me out of my house on a Saturday. It's just not a fun experience. And this is an easy button. I get to push an easy button, get an offer. If, if we're hearing a thousand people are doing that and it just rolled out in one year, I think that the percentage of people who will at least push the easy button to see what the offer is is going to be like 75 or 80 percent of people within a couple of years. So for us to, to say, hey, we've got a better solution, I think is is just being a little bit naive to what's happening. And I think that what you're the way to combat this and what we should be thinking about with our radio ads is this is the easy button. We have an easy button too, and we have a second option which may possibly net you more money. So call us, push the easy button, get your offer, and then also see what how much money you could net. It's better than just pushing an easy button and not having that second option. Matt, that, that's exactly my point. Thank you for articulating that. All we're saying is if you create the easy button, create the options, that's what we're talking about. But if you go to a website and the buttons aren't there, that's only hurting yourself. You got to have the buttons there and make it easy for people. And now uh, another thing, if you also showed to the point of Reagan's spot, when if you say it's not just, you might just, you can call them make a one button, one buyer. But what if you already had a thousand buyers anxious to see before it hits the market 
You think you'll also achieve your purpose? Get a quick sale, immediate cash offer, and immediate multiple offers because she's built up a program of coming soon that delivers that. Yeah. Am I missing something or is that, does that make sense? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, but showing the value. Articulate it. Go ahead, Tiffany. Marty, I have a question for you regarding the repairs that you were talking about. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you go about that? Like, what repairs do you make? And um, you said you, you take care of that expense up front sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you get that money we'll have, back? To we'll have an ex inspection. Okay. I mean, we'll have an inspection and, and uh, disclose anything that we'd need to disclose. And, of course, I got guidelines. It's an individual decision by decision, that kind of thing. But if it's a, it's a really good bet, we're going to go with it. We're gonna All right, so let's just say that you have a home inspection and the house needs a, a new roof. What, what kind of what does that put you in? If that's the only thing that it needs, then then we've got roofers that we would call and we would get the best price on that. Okay, so you would take care of the expense of that up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how do you get that money back? You put that on the settlement yeah, statement absolutely. from the it's seller. On the settlement statement. If I know they've got enough equity in there, let's say that roof is seventy five hundred, I'll charge them a fee for that, and we'll in some cases charge them a higher commission. Okay. Can I can I speak to that? that? Good. Mm -hmm. So uh, that a couple things I just wanted to bring up because you brought it up earlier, Marty, and I was going to actually expand on that. We've mm -hmm. been doing that for about a year and a half, two years now. We do a promissory note at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, this is actually before we get into escrow. I want the house to be at its absolute stellar condition. Absolutely. And if they can't afford to do it, we will put it on the part of the listing contract that states that, that we, and we don't charge them any interest. You don't owe us a dime until you close escrow. Right. You have to pay us at close right. of escrow. Now... You can't cancel this contract. You can't get out of this and not right. until you pay us back. And if you if you cancel the contract, it's a 10% interest. Mm -hmm. If you don't, and then it's 10% interest every month until you do. Yeah. So that we have something in writing signed by them that we could actually hold up in a court. It's never, it's happened every time they've paid us back. We've done it many, many times. Yes. And I swear I'll do it all day long. It's actually one of our value propositions. It's like, let us be your bank and yes. we won't charge you interest. There you go. But you give us a full price. We, we get a full commission on it. We have, but that was just one of the things. And it's super easy to get back in your listing. It's not as long as you, but it's up to you to keep track of it. <laughs> but what I was going to say is we, Open Door has been in our market for a while and we now have several, several Open Door offers. We've done them on our own rental properties. We've asked for Open Door uh, offers. And it's funny, we've gone and looked. All of them have been about twenty-five dollars to $27,000 minimum in their pocket. Doesn't matter what the price of the house was. They'll use, oh, the agent will charge you. And one of them that said it was going to charge 6% was the interest, the, I mean, a commission that an agent. The other one said the agent would charge 8%. It's whatever looks good on their numbers. It doesn't, there's no rhyme or reason that I could see on the three we did. Um, but now clients have showed us, and every one of them has been a 25000 minimum profit. Well, it's not really profit, but they call it, you know, once they add all their incidentals to it. And then... Um, the options. We literally just closed escrow today. I'm so excited. I literally just got the closing. This buyer called us for instant offer because Open Door offered them an offer. I, they came and said, hey, we heard your spot. You said that you'll also offer us an instant. It was off the radio, KFROG. And so we called him and said, look, I, and he happened to get me when he called. So I said, just give us the opportunity. I do you really, I'm, I'm actually going to encourage you, don't accept either one of our offers. Just talk to us. Let us put us on the market. Let's put you on the market for two weeks. He kept saying his open door offer was so good. The open door rep has never been to your house. He doesn't know you back to a freeway. <laughs> so once he gets there, does the inspections, sees you're back to a freeway, that number is going to dramatically change. So let's just try this. Just give us two weeks. If we can't get this sold for top dollar in two weeks, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to tell you, take the open door offer. Do you know, so literally we just closed today, got him, after all his commissions, our commissions, anybody else, he, we netted him $43,000 extra in his pocket. I can't wait to tell him oh, yeah. the success story. I love it. He is raving about us. Before we lose track of time, we've got about 10 minutes. I didn't want to ignore Ryan, because Ryan's been patiently sitting here waiting for a long time. And what's funny, I, 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 why I had you specifically on this, because you have embraced, you are, the, you are an eye buyer, mm -hmm. but the difference is, and what I want to really convey is, you do both. Explain how you deal with the balance. You've done a little bit so far, but how'd you do the balance and also how'd you align your website? Because you actually had a couple of different websites and talk to that. Yeah, so we 
we started the, I started the instant offer program because they're not in our market yet. We have like, we buy ugly houses, stuff like that. My goal was to ramp up the instant offer so strong and so quickly that by the time they came to our market, hopefully I could sell my instant offer program to them and just get absorbed and kind of like cash out. Um, ironically, it's turning out to be a, a really nice option for our clients. And, and that's why I kind of said, I think everyone here is so focused on what they don't do or what, how much they charge and all the fees and everything like that. I think it's just more of an opportunity to say, run a better instant offer program than them versus focusing on, oh, well, the net, I can net them more. Well, let them make that decision because we get a lot of discrete sales that are relocation, divorce, whatever it may be, where they're not focused on the net number. They're just focused on the convenience of it. And I think that if we go in there with that mentality of what is most important to you, that is our fiduciary responsibility. You know, when we start, when that is the focus of what their goals are and when you can offer them several options, I think it's a lot easier to combat some of you know, these other companies that you guys are talking about. But what we did was we, uh, we started, we had a instant offer webpage. We had a guaranteed sale landing page. We had a buyer site. Um, what we did was we pushed everything to one page. If you want to go to the homepage real quick, just click on that top left icon. I don't know if it's up there. Yeah. So like, no matter what, wherever they go, they're getting pushed here and ultimately they can either, you know, sell your home instant offer, find a home. And then also we have, you know, unique URLs or domains that are pointing. So if you click on the instant offer uh, tab, obviously it takes you to get your instant offer. Um, but what we're trying, we want to drive all of our traffic here. We're doing, I talked to Mark for a while and he had an interesting position on like some of the domains for each list page, but on our webpage, it's actually, we're sliding in want to buy this house, but need to sell yours, learn more about our instant offer. Everything we're doing. And, you know, I was talking to Mark about this. We're, we're getting that instant offer everywhere. I just had uh, a situation where I didn't profit on the instant offer sale. I was sitting in an open house. Yes, I still do that. Um, half million dollar townhouse. Buyers come in and say, we love this house. It's a developer of mine who has a lot of more business to gain. The buyers came in and said, we love this townhouse. However, we got to sell our house first. I said, let me take a look at it. You know, we do this instant offer program. I broke even on the purchase of their house, but I double ended a half a million dollar house. My developer loves me. He just gave me 10 new townhouses that are coming on the market, all between five and 600,000. And it's like, it wasn't about the profitability. It wasn't about the profitability on purchasing their house. It was about solving a problem that helped them get into the new townhouse in ultimately we made the profit on the other side. So that's why I keep saying, I think that you guys got to stop focusing on how much they're netting and more focus on being solution oriented. But I think having that knowledge of how you can eliminate those extra fees, that's not a bad thing, is it? No, I think that, look, what is most important to them? And, and if Open Door can provide a better solution than we can, and it's in their best interest, then we need to find a better way to have more of a value proposition, you know? Right. There, one of the things, scroll down on this real quick. If something that, keep going, is this up there? Yeah, keep going. One of the things we're starting to do, keep going. Um, so like our website, if you hover over these, so like uh, these are all, what we're starting to really do is we're, we're you, so I, I posted on uh, the Facebook group that bio video. We are really focusing on video in like high quality to solid content video. We're starting to do, instead of just success stories like this, like the most convenient, easy way to sell your home, seriously, thank you. Um, we're starting to focus on getting really solid video content of these people, just 15 to 30 seconds where people can start hearing their stories. And we think that's also going to really... Um, it's going to make people a lot more comfortable. We do get some people that say it sounds too good to be true. And when you hear, you know, a couple saying, I can't believe he bought our house so that we could buy our dream home. That's where I think that's just really powerful. For sure. No, absolutely. I, you had a, a, Jason had a comment about that. Um, I guess I totally disagree. Um, and part I disagree with is that, um, <clears throat> You know, I guess there is a segment of the market that does want uh, 
convenience, uh, but we're, you know, we're pretty polarizing that we don't want, we don't have to have all of it. Uh, we just believe in the strategy of preeminence, and the strategy of preeminence is basically uh, being honest and uh, treating the, um, you know, falling in love with the client and treating the client as a client before they're even a client, and, you know, uh, Part of that in our belief is, you know, most of us, including myself, uh, you know, bought, you know, the dream of buying real estate was to buy something that, you know, later on that, uh, you know, if I wanted to move up and sell the home, I had equity in the home and I didn't have someone taking that equity. So I think that, you know, basically, you know, uh, it's okay to be open and real with the consumer and open and real in the content of those ads that you're running. Um, and, you know, our ads do say that, but just one little spin on the ad is, you know, hey, if your home, you know, maybe is in poor condition or maybe, um, uh, you know, you're in a distressed situation and you have to sell your home, we can do that for you. Um, um, but, you know, uh, um, again, that's just my opinion and, you know, maybe I'm wrong. I'm always searching for a, a uh, uh, a better way of my thinking that, you know, being open that I could be wrong as well. But I guess that was uh, just the instant offer thing. When they do come to your market, when you got Zillow, when you got OfferPad, when you got Open Door, when you got Knock, when they all are in your market, place and they got big fat bankrolls uh, to spend the marketing where you're spending it TV, radio, uh, billboards, etc. Uh, you know, the game's real and the game is on. So, uh, you know, that's just been our play is just being, uh, you know, let's educate the consumer by just being honest with them, being honest with those testimonials. Uh, you know, we don't have to brag about ourselves. We don't have to tell the story. We can just let the consumer tell the story of, you know, how they almost lost, uh, what was that one, Tracy, almost $100,000 on a four hundred or five hundred thousand dollar home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred hundred what? Hundred twenty five. Hundred twenty five thousand. I I think they'd rather have that hundred twenty five thousand dollars versus convenience. Hey Jason. A question though. When you win the lottery they give you an option. Do you want the cash sum now or do you want it paid over the next thirty years? Yeah. Right? What, 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 which one? Which one do you want? But here's the point: Just, we can find situations for wins and losses on both sides. But the, the the point is, there's an option. There's a solution. If you want to sell your home and you think they're going to take your equity, then don't go with it. But what happens if you can sell your home to buy a better? home where you have more equity, but you can't do that because you still need to sell your home. But what if there was a solution where 21 day cash close? I just think that's why the option is important. And I think that's going to give us a, lot, a, a huge leg up. I, I know the appointments that I've gone to, it wasn't for the purpose that they were in a distressed situation. Um, they did have time to put the house on the market. You know, if, if it, you're marketing it well, a lot of our homes will sell during coming soon before they even hit the market. So we're giving that them that option that they don't have. We're not putting it yet on the MLS. We're going to use Zillow coming soon. We're going to use our coming soon process. So you're not going to be blasted on the MLS yet, but we're going to target our database. We're going to find buyers where we can offer those solutions during our coming soon. But again, it is. It, like he's saying, it's it's the goal of what they want. But if you sit and explain, this is how we can get to your goal, and we can still get to your goal if you've got an extra two weeks or an extra three weeks, and this is how you'll maximize that. But it, it, if they don't want showings, then we have this coming soon process, and we'll target for that right buyer. <laughs> You know, Knox CEO said that they wanted, he first saw, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, that they would have 50%, 51% of our market. They're going, they're true. They're going to be there. I hope they don't have 51%, but they're going to have a bigger percentage than we want them to have. And, and we do have to listen to the consumer. Let me tell you something. When that divorce couple calls, they want out. <laughs> it's not about the money. It is about what they want when they want it. And we're going to have to deliver. And that's the reason, actually, I had a meaningful conversation with my friend, Jace, uh, Justin, from Canada. And I, and I think we're going to have to up our game as far as our service to our fiduciary, our seller. We're going to 
have to give them something. We're going to have to give them, uh, what was that that they called a few minutes ago, the uh, uh, open door experience? <laughs> We're going to have to give them an experience that wows them so much that we got the whole town talking and walking and, and shouting about us. Can, can I just, real quick, for the people that are doing it, a couple places where we found some really unique opportunities. I don't know how f familiar you guys are with, like, assisted living and Medicaid, and when, you know, Medicaid comes in, it's normally when they liquidate all the assets. There's I've got The first one that, ha the reason how it happened with me was, it was a year ago, and I don't know if Shivers is here, but I I got a call from a gentleman who said, I hear your guaranteed sale program, would you just buy my house? I didn't really want to, you know, but I just... I wrote an offer that ultimately I thought reflected a very good value for myself. After it sold, I'm like, I'm curious, why did you accept that number? And he said, well, because it was all going to Medicaid anyways until we sold that last, or it was all going to an assisted living facility where my mom was staying. He's like, until I sold that that property, Medicaid didn't kick in. And so, and this was a gentleman who was living in Alaska who streamed us on WTAM where he said, I didn't want to have to fly to Cleveland, Ohio to get all the stuff out of my mom's property when at the end of the day it was all going to the assisted living facility anyways. So it's like that is a huge opportunity and a value proposition where the net isn't as important, but you know, it, it, there's a lot of underlying details. Also, we've had a lot of success with uh, people with tenants currently in their property. We just purchased one where we actually purchased with the tenant, handled the eviction process. It, Ironically, we didn't even have to evict the tenant. We just gave her $1,000 and she left. And that was a huge opportunity for us. So there's a lot of creative ways where it's providing solutions um, that I think you guys should just incorporate. And then on the flip side for our team, it is providing such an opportunity for our buyer's agents from a standpoint of we are sitting on inventory that we know that's coming on the market. And that's a value proposition to the buyers of our buyer specialist because they know what we have coming up even before we purchase it. Um, imagine if you can tell your buyers, just like Marty does, you know, she excels at the coming soon. Imagine if you own all the coming soon. So I, just, I think there's a lot of values to it besides just focusing on net dollars of the value it offers your team, the value it offers your clients. I just think it's something that should be considered. Well, guys, it's 12.02. We could keep probably another hour <laughs> hitting on this, but do you guys want five more minutes or are you guys ready to rock rock and roll for lunch? <laughs> okay, just just hey, just, Jordan, was there another, or you had uh, Tigo in a comment? Yeah, it, just real quick. I, We've been talking about Open Door. We haven't really talked about Zillow. And to answer Chip's question, I, I believe their goal is to be in the top 100 markets by the end of next year is what I've heard from, from Greg Schwartz. But anybody here partnering with Zillow? Because they, quote, air quote, partner with, with Zillow, you know, is doing that. And either on the, obviously, lead generation side for listings and then also the uh, actual listing of their properties. So I'm just curious to hear people's Steven, experience. Stephen, do you want to comment on that? I want to go well. after it in Albuquerque when they come there. <laughs> Let's see. I want to give a shout out to Rate and the fact that when they do come to your market, all your competitors don't know what to do. And it freaks them out, and it's a great recruiting opportunity because only you in this group know what to do when they come, and your competitors have no answer to the sellers when they talk about eye buying. So, um, great news there. So, when Zillow comes to your market, they with sellers they know the difference between selling buyer leads and that sellers are paying the commission. Sellers are much more picky, so they come to town and they interview multiple teams only. Um, then they pick one team to handle the leads when they buy the home and in my market they pick three other teams they pick four and one's dropped out um, to sell the lead to um, if they don't buy it and their their goal is to buy about five percent of the reach outs and sell 95 percent of the leads so we're one of the companies that um, they sell the lead to and they sell it by 35 percent referral fee at closing um, we've gotten um, about six leads in the last 60 days and we've listed and closed two already um, and um, uh, my buddy got the at Redbud with Keller Williams in, in Charlotte got the business when Keller when um, Zillow buys the home um, from looking at their volume and their commission it looks like they're they're getting making very little money off of it 
and it's a lot of work. So anytime there's a reach out between when they go online to Zillow all the way up to the closing, if they Zillow backs out or the consumer backs out, we get the lead. Okay, good. Then. Can I have a question, Stephen? Did you, did you pay 35% for both of those closings? At closing, we paid a 35% referral fee. So we're that agent in our market, and we were told we, we've actually already closed. We haven't have to pay a dime yet because they don't have the system up and running yet. So yeah, but, but, comes, we will, but right, right. Now, they're free. That's correct. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks, guys. Well, wait, one more? Yeah. <laughs> You know, we started running a, a TV ad, and we're now uh, doing it on radio, as you know. But uh, I, I hear a lot about the iBuyers and the guaranteed sale and this and that. And we just started offering a guaranteed four, uh, three guaranteed or three cash offers guaranteed in the next 48 hours, and the three cash offers beats the hell out of one cash offer. And the reason that we're doing three is because I want to buy the houses. But then the the second thing is. If they want, if they do want the three cash offers, then we go get them after they're listed with us from Open Door or OfferPad, and we're making the one percent referral fee. So if those offers are better than than what we can do, and they want it fast, then we have that option. But the the best part is, ninety five percent of the people when we're in the house are not even asking, just like the guaranteed sale. So I think the cash offers and multiple cash offers is where we ought to think about others focusing because our phone is blowing up and we're listing them like crazy. I like it. I think that's like a gr okay. great solution oriented, you know, option of let's be the broker to these instant offer programs. And I, I think that's phenomenal. That's really cool. No, that's good stuff. That's good. And I Google searched you and I did find you first page. And you saw the cash Nice. Excellent. Well, before, before, before we head to lunch, um, if, if, I, if I give Chris a mic real quick, Chris Heller is actually in the house. I know you do get around too, Chris. You're, I think you're almost at a conference every other day. Anything you want to add to this discussion? From, to yeah, yeah well, um, as I've been saying here, listening, this is happening. This is, uh, and if we really think about objectively, if we're selling our homes, if I can sell my home and not have to have strangers traipse through it and not have to fix it up, and not have to do all those things and get a fair price, sign me up. You know, so it's, it's really important that as agents in our businesses that we're be able to offer the consumers you know, what they want or, or options and, and uh, solutions to the different things. It isn't going to work for everyone. Not everyone wants it. Not everyone needs it. But we absolutely have to be the solution for them. So. No, that's excellent. I also I add one more thing to that. Don't underestimate the influencer you have they want and use that to your advantage. But Chris, you want to share one last thing about Mello, what, what's been happening with that before we go to lunch? Sure. It was actually, it was about a year ago at, at this event where we really were, were launching it. So in the last year, since then, we've uh, sent out over 8,000 referrals. Uh, over 1,000 have already closed. There's several thousand that are out working uh, with with teams, um, how many of you? Just out of curiosity, how many of you are are have gotten a mellow home referral? All right, this is awesome. So the um, it, we have this year probably uh, so, well so far year to date we are up 35 percent in the number of referrals, and we expect that number to keep going. Uh, so with our uh, sister company, Loan Depot, who's providing the leads uh, and more referrals that we're able to send out, we'd love to have teams like the ones in this room as our referral partners. We know you guys and gals are the ones that know how to take care of customers, you know how to work efficiently and effectively with them, and you get the job done, and that makes our customers really happy. And you got a, you got, there's a table, you actually have a table out there with Loan Depot. Yeah, there's a table out there. Um, are, are, there's a couple of our uh, leadership from Lone Depot here. Are you guys in the room? I see them way over there. Um, so yeah, talk to them. They, uh, my team has a, an MSA with Lone Depot and uh, it works out really well. And uh, there's lots of cool things that that side of the company does that helps us as agents. 
So Excellent. thanks, Matt. It, Appreciate real it. quick, I think a lot of this is a function of marketing. You talk at like Mellow and uh, Home Light and everything like that. How many times have you guys gotten a call from a seller and then all of a sudden you found out that they actually, after you already went on the appointment, still went to Home Light? Um, I think that it happens, right? I think that a lot of this has to do with the marketing approach that you take. And, and the instant offer is is whether it's uh, offer pad, open door, whatever it is, it's just a, a lead gen funnel that if they want, they could just sell those leads out to you as potential people that want to sell their home. So I think that that needs to be a, a, a real conversation with Matt and Dave about from a marketing standpoint, how are we creating that funnel and why would they be attracted to our funnel before they enter into offer pads funnel or Zillow instant offers funnel because as soon as they get into that funnel, they're going to start sending them out to whatever they agent they're getting a kickback or a referral free from or you know so I just I think that that has to be a, a large focus from a marketing standpoint is how can you engage them and get them to you know put in their information first before they go to one of those other uh, sites bless you no, that, 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 that's exactly the point just what, if I could just add one last thing to that home light conversation uh, we, we talked about home light a little bit yesterday as well and I think the concern that an agent would have is a concern I would have that the lead that Home Light sends is already in our database. Yeah. We're already working with yeah. them, right? right. But uh, Reagan can speak to the fact that they're, uh, they've had the experience where that's happened a number of times. And if you have the tracking, if you have good communication that you can prove that that's the case, you, could, you let Home Light know and they'll waive the fee. Yep. Right? And it's 25%. So really, I think they, there is a, a they complement rate and, and Home Light complement each other. Because as mentioned yesterday, everybody in this room is going to have better stats than any of your competitors. And, you know, you to get one-tenth of all those leads or one-fifth or whatever your market proves to be, um, especially if you can have that conversation after in where in that one fear about you already have the lead. But uh, yeah, it's all about options. And as Ryan said, we're right there every day to talk about crafting the message. I love the interactive spots because education is really important. So it's like a little mini talk show, little mini 60 minute talk show, because sometimes it's hard to say all this in a 60 second ad. But if you can have a series of conversational interactive spots with your talent where you're explaining the realities, the options that you offer, now you're, it's the best of all worlds. No, that's excellent. That's, I just want to make sure you're woke up to this reality. Embrace it. Make it better. That's why I had a hard talk first thing this morning because you, we can beat this. And the way we beat this is being smarter, like what we guys have all shared, but making sure it's on your homepage, make sure you're telling stories, using influencers, and leveraging off each other like this. And look, we beat Goliath before back in 2008 when, the, when, the, when the, all those things hit. You guys survived. And we'll do it again. We just got to be smarter. So let's break for lunch. But 1.30, be back. You're going to love to see how you